in full zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises Inc. Hafa and welcome everyone to another edition of In Full Zoom. I'm Nestor Licanto. And uh, first of all, let me introduce our guests for this week, uh, Dr. Uh, Mario Okada, for, uh, president of the Guam Community College. We have another doctor, Dr. Margaret Hattori Uchino with the uh, University of Guam School of Nursing. And we have De Denise Mendiola, who is the coordinator of the conference that we're gonna talk about, uh, the WORC work which is what it's about, work. And so uh, let me just start with you, Denise, since you're gonna be the one coordinating this, what is the WORK conference about? So WORK is, uh, stands for Work Force Opportunities Reimagined Conference Two. So this is our second one. And it will be um, held on November 19 and 20 this month. And it's a two day event that's gonna focus on discussing um, issues related to our workforce development. Uh, initiatives and how we can get our um, community back to work. All right. And, and Dr. Okada, before we, I ask you another question, I want to congratulate you on being named a Women in Business Champion for this year. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about um, what uh, the, the uh, reimagining of, of, of the work and, and why we need to do that. I, I imagine that the pandemic has a lot to do with that. Yeah, so we recognized uh, several months ago that uh, this whole pandemic was going to shift the minds of what individuals wanted to do in terms of long-term careers or shifting their career. So basically we wanted to have a conversation to find out what those careers were and how the college and the university and other training providers can help skill them, upskill them for those positions. Um, so this is the time, you know, we know that there's some limitations in terms of where, what people can do, and we know that folks are unemployed, but we wanted to provide an avenue for people to reshape um, their skills to upskill so that they can have the necessary um, training certifications so that when we are allowed to open back up to a, a broader extent, that people will be ready for those jobs. Now, some of those jobs have been available and never stopped but there was not a lot of interest in those. And so now people are recognizing that there are some industries that continue to do work even during this pandemic. And that might, this might be an opportunity for them to now step into those roles so that they can either gain employment or get um, better employment based on skills that they're able to obtain. Okay. And, and uh, Dr. Hattori Chima, talk a little bit about um, uh, how the nursing uh, industry will be um, uh, involved in, in this particular conference? Well, uh, first of all, I just really want to thank Dr. Okada and, and Denise for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Uh, particular, we've always worked well together with GCC's allied health programs, but when the pandemic started in March, um, their allied health director, uh, Dorothy Duenas and I were activated together to help with the nursing resources command post. And it was a, it's a huge burden, but we, we knew at that moment, you know, we have to work together. It's not about, you know, UOG versus GCC, which it, it's never been. Um, but now more than ever, we have to leverage our faculty. We have to leverage all our resources to meet the need because uh, as Dr. Okada said, these jobs have always been there and there has not been enough interest but also from the faculty and the schools at UOG, we just haven't been able to juggle doing our BSN, our RN program, increasing that, which we were able to do. We, we admitted 40 students uh, in January uh, last year, this year, which is more than usual, but um, it, it, we need nursing assistants, we need caregivers, uh, we need all different kinds of, of levels of care, medical assistance, which GCC does as well, and they do uh, licensed practical nurses. And so the pandemic just amplified that problem. And we've been able to sit together and say, hey, you know, uh, for instance, there's an innovative program. All the hospitals need nursing assistants like today. Well, you know, like last month. But UOG alone can't, we can't produce enough. And so uh, Dorothy and I have met and with the nursing leaders, we came up with an innovative strategy to do a short program 
uh, which we're going to do this month and next. And uh, UOG will train 30 people. Um, and thanks to funding support from the governor's office, uh, we will be able to train 30 people. And then GCC will take 30 people and train them, um, train the next batch. And that will only be the tip of the iceberg for the pandemic uh, relief at GMH, GRMC, and um, some other agencies like Health Services of the Pacific. But I, I believe it's this partnership that will help us uh, survive the pandemic. I mean, I mean that both, uh, you know, literally and figuratively. But the burden is, is so great because there is this this need that already existed prior to the pandemic. All right, and and Margaret, I'd be remiss too if I didn't also congratulate you about being named to the American Academy of Nursing. Congratulations to you on that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Denise, uh, moving on to you again. Uh, to tell me a little bit more about um, folks that might be interested in, in um, participating or listening in, and uh, what sort of uh, things will they be hearing during this uh, conference in November or later this month? Yes, so um, last conference, um, we just spent the time uh, discussing what the needs were. And so this conference, we're going to dig deeper and say, okay, we figured out based on the feedback, these are the things that are needed. So let's get these training programs going. So this is what we're going to be doing this conference. We've broken out them um, into panels. And so our speakers will be talking in different industries. So we have construction, uh, technology, we have healthcare, of course, safety and sanitation, and we even have um, an area for entrepreneurship. So all of these areas are going to be um, discussed um, in more detail. Um, what are the needs right now? What are gonna be the needs in the future? Uh, what kind of training is available? What, what are the gaps? And so we brought um, quite a few uh, leaders in each of the industries to be able to speak to everybody about these areas and to talk about what is happening now. So um, there are some boot camps that have been stood up uh, in construction, uh, in transportation, and in ship repair. And then we're also with Dr. Um, Hattori Uchima and with our other folks, they're gonna talk about the CNA programs, the TCNA program, um, and you know other areas uh, related to healthcare. So you're gonna be able to um, get a better idea of what's happening in each of the industries, what the needs are, and then what's going to be available. So, um, so that's really gonna, is you know, the, the primary focus of work too. All right, and Dr. Okada, I, I know um, the Chamber of Commerce, in fact, a good friend of yours who has been uh, participating in, the, in uh, some of the GCC programs, uh, Joe Cruz, um, they've come up with, um, a, I think, a four, like a 40-page initiative of industries that, uh, to diversify the economy. Are you working closely with them and trying to align, as you said earlier, to reshape the workforce to kind of accommodate these industries that they're trying to uh, diversify Guam's economy with? Absolutely. So um, I did get um, I did get to review the document and this helps us build the training programs that are going to be necessary for the industries that will be coming to Guam or that are attracted to Guam because of their efforts. And so basically, you know, when you when you talk about the work conference, yes, we identify and we talk about the different areas, as Denise mentioned, but it also provides opportunity for people to just say, well, what about this? And can GCC do something in another field? So it is a form of data collection and filling the gaps where people are interested in something that maybe we haven't really thought about or interest or areas where like what Joe is doing, identify area potential areas and then checking to see what training opportunities can we help to support that industry if it were to come to Guam. So um, these are things that we're, you know, we look every time we do something uh, here at the college, we always go back to what does the assessment say? What is the workforce development? Because we don't want to flood the market where there's no jobs, but we want to, and the university does that as well. So, um, and maybe it's something that we put on um, periodically as opposed to continuously. So we provide it maybe once every couple of years because you can't, keep um, things running if there's no students. And so program review tells us this is the need of the community. Program review also gives us opportunities to identify areas where we haven't tapped yet 
we haven't developed, but gives us time to develop those programs so that we can support new industries that come. So, like I said, this is a conversation that goes beyond what happens here in terms of planning at the college or at the university, but bringing in business leaders and industry to say, here's how we can help leverage, as Dr. Hattori has said, here's how we can help leverage everything that we have so that Guam can be successful and Guam can provide the trainers and Guam can provide the workforce to support our economy. Because if we're gonna rely outside, and there's some programs that GCC has where we rely on outside folks to help get us uh, to build the framework so that we can eventually take, um, take the program under our wing. For example, paramedics. Paramedics took off in July and paramedic, the group that we hired out of the School of EMS, paramedics is, is here to help build the GCC paramedic program so that it becomes a longer term program as opposed to a one cohort. And so that's how we've reached out to individuals outside of Guam to help bring and help us build programs so that they can be eventually supported locally. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. Yeah, along those lines, and let me ask you, uh, Dr. Hattori, um, one of the things that uh, the governor has envisioned, and, and of course, it's not etched in his stone quite yet, but is the construction of a new hospital. And one of the sites is up near UOG, which would be close to GCC. And um, the thought is perhaps a teaching hospital. And, and, we, and Dr. Okada just talked about the need to bring more um, uh, uh, opportunities for training here, but also from the region. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, building a training hospital um, as the new GMH? Well, uh, yeah, fortunately, uh, some of the people making that proposal have, have approached me. And of course, I think it's a great idea because it's not just uh, nursing that there's needs for. We need respiratory therapists. We need x-ray technicians. Uh, we need medical billing and coders, you know, so there's been for years, there's been so much emphasis on, you know, the MDs and the RNs, but we've kind of uh, lost track of all these other services that are, that are needed. And so I really feel if we have, of course, we, the people of Guam deserve, you know, state of the art care. And if that means a new hospital, um, then I fully support that, but it would really help our programs. And I don't want to speak on behalf of GCC, but I know uh, it really would help us to have more opportunity for, for training. Uh, we started using GRMC and, and thankfully that's been a great option for both UOG and GCC, uh, but there are limitations and both hospitals do kind of get, uh, get full of students when GCC and URG are, are there at the same time. Uh, and because partly it's a space issue, GMC's wards are very small, whereas GRMC, because they're new, the wards are, are much larger. And if you think about COVID and you know future pandemics and infection control, you do you should have a hospital where you know there is much more space and and really up to date. And so of course that would be wonderful uh, for us in terms of being able to train people and not just in nursing, uh, but we also have social work, we have health science, pre physical therapy, public health, exercise science, and health promotion. And so you know that other students would make great use of of a facility that's close by. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I had occasion to go to the, to OSU, the Oregon Health Sciences University, which I'm, I'm sure you know, is probably one of the best um, university hospitals in, in the entire country, if not the world. And and so it seemed to me because of the facility that it is, that, that they pour a lot of funding, they pour a lot of money into that facility. And that, you know, that's something that maybe perhaps Guam could do on a smaller scale, of course, because of our size, but you know, just for the region. And what do you what do you think about that? Well, Nestor, uh, in terms of things like research, also, right? Because OHSU is very research intensive, um, and we've got some grants with the uh, NCI uh, and you know other NIH entities. But if we had the ability to do things like clinical trials, right, which FHP's talked about, uh, and Dr. Ambrali and others uh, in the the medical and nursing community. 
uh, then of course that uh, a state of the art larger hospital would help us potentially bring in other dollars in terms of research. And you know, there's huge health disparities among our Pacific Island population. Uh, and we see that with COVID. And so I really feel that we can, um, you know, we can improve the quality of care and also contribute more through research. But we do work with the region. Um, we help, we work with the nursing program in the Marshall Islands, as well as a program at uh, COM FSM. And GCC also collaborates uh, with them. And so some of their nursing students, even from NMC uh, in Saipan, they'll take a two-year nursing program and they want to come to UOG uh, for their bachelor's degree. And it's the same with their um, associate degree public health programs. So they have other programs that could easily feed into UOG. Um, and I, I believe having a, you know, a, a newer hospital, larger hospital would attract more of those students as well and serve the region, definitely. Thank you. Sure. And Denise, uh, you've been involved in the, in the in you know educating labor and businesses for quite a while. And what are the challenges uh, that uh, labor faces here, the workforce in particular? Well, I think um, that from my vantage point, working with the small businesses for many years, um, the challenge is um, not having the um, the capacity to be able to. Um, have employees um, be, you know, flexible enough for them to be able to move around in different positions. Um, a lot of times they're the first to go in situations like this. Um, and so for employees, their challenge is uh, the barriers for them to get back into the workforce. So things like having a diploma, a GED, having the skills that the employers require, but, but talking to the employers now, now that I'm at GCC, understanding from, um, from the, the, the bigger businesses also, that um, they really would just like for employees to have the, the necessary skills like work ethic, um, to be able to understand um, character building and being able to um, have pride in their work and to, to be, um, you know, to, to have that that kind of attitude where they they want to work. <laughs> so, you know, those are the things that that we're seeing is something that people don't necessarily talk about a lot, but um, it has to be um, it has to be a focus for our employees right now because once, you know, once people start getting back to work, it's going to be really challenging for those that have these high barriers to enter. So this is why we have our training programs and why we collaborate together um, with the other organizations such as UOG, because then we can um, be able to help these employees to have a better uh, chance at getting into these, these jobs as they open up. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. Yeah, and, and Dr. Okada, so do you have an idea of uh, what you think would be um, the, the most promising in new industries to, to bring to Guam and um, how um, we should prepare uh, the workforce for it. Because, um, you know, as Joe's, Joe, Joe's group and the Chambers group have some ideas, but, um, you know, um, along with those industries, we have to be able to provide um, the workforce and, and that's, um, you know, GCC and the university's role and Denise's role. To, to help uh, shape that workforce. But um, what are the industries do you think that uh, show the most promise uh, for diversifying our, our economy? I know there's always gonna be tourism and there's always gonna be you know, federal spending and those are the two pillars, the two legs that we've stood on for so many years. But um, officials uh, and leaders have always said for, you know, for, for, for as long as I can remember that there is a need to diversify. And I think this pandemic has really um, brought that to the to the forefront, the need to diversify our, our economy because we just lost one of our legs with the uh, you know, virtual collapse of the tourism industry. So what industries do you see from your vantage point are the most promising going forward? So 
You know, a lot, a lot of it will really have to do with the capacity for Guam to provide the, the workforce. So for, as an example, uh, several years ago, we had um, discussions with the uh, business industry and the chambers to discuss about the Silicon Village that dealt with information technology. And as a result of that, uh, the telecom companies in support of GCC's application for federal funding actually stood up a program at Tizen High School, which is, is, is really successful. And so um, the Tizen High School project for telecom, the students will actually graduate from high school if they obtain their certificate of mastery with 19 college credits in computer science. I mean, imagine that getting out of high school uh, with 19 college credits. And then now with further conversations and collaborations with the University of Guam, they will complete their first two years that already includes that 19 credits for their first two years of computer science here and then they will go to the university for the remaining two years. So it's a high school um, and a two plus two with the University of Guam. So it's a, it's a seamless transition if you enter into that component. And industry helped us build the curriculum. Industry has helped guide these students through their uh, educational journey. So we're gonna start to see the results of those students in that telecom project. Um, uh, I wanna say by the end of this academic year, we'll start to see how they, that will move. We want to encourage, of course, more folks to enter into the IT. I don't know about you, but IT seems to be what everybody depends on these days. I mean, we know the limitations. We know how much more capacity people need. We know that things, I mean, just shifting to online was a big IT project. And it's still, you know, for some folks, it's still, you know, they, they're not there yet. And so, but those are the jobs. If you start to do recruitment for IT, those are the hardest to recruit, just like nursing. IT folks are very difficult to recruit. So that's one area I think that we can really look into to expand. Um, another conversation we had, and we just recently signed off on an, on an agreement with, um, was with Aviation Concepts. So Aviation Concepts now, GCC will be certifying faculty from the college to be, um, aircraft certification dispatch or aircraft dispatch certification. So these are folks that want to do um, oh, short flight simulations and stuff like that. So we think that eventually folks are going to be um, entering into aviation because look at what's happening with drones. And so we've not had that specific area on drones, but I mean, that's another IT related aircraft type um, industry that folks are starting to look at. So those are two um, areas that we're already engaged in. But then, I mean, even with just ship repair, this is our third ship repair boot camp that the college has now launched. And just imagine the capacity of ships that can come to Guam if they had more workers to service those ships. So I think some of the industry really is limited based on the capability of Guam to handle, to handle these. Um, I mean, we know that medical code and billing, a lot of that um, stuff is probably done off island. The call centers, I don't know if you've called uh, some of the, call, not the 311 call center, but some of the other call centers for organizations, you've got people from the states that are answering the call or someplace else. And so maybe those are areas where we can also create or establish that um, industry here. And um, so, you know, I, I would say um, anything dealing with transportation, um, aircraft dispatch, um, drones, those technologies and IT are, are things that we can really um, start to look at. Yeah, and, and along those lines, I think um, it's kind of like the chicken and egg argument. Um, we need to create the labor force, but we need to have the industries to, to employ them. So uh, Dr. Uh, Hattari, I know that you're primarily focused on, on the School of Nursing, but in speaking for the university, uh, is that the thought process um, at UOG as well? Is that um, we need, um, you guys up at in Mangilao need to, to identify what um, potential industries are coming to Guam and, and need to prepare uh, your curriculum um, for at least some of that? Yes, uh, yes. You know, I, I, I just promoted you to president of UOG, by the way, no, so. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but um, from, from your point, point from you, OG. <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, you know, we started the School of Engineering. And so I think that's a great example of working with just exactly how Dr. Okada described it. 
working with industry. Um, and the president and the senior vice president uh, have worked so hard on that. And so I think that's a, a good example of uh, filling a need in the community. But yes, yes, the senior vice president and the president are always making sure when they talk to the, the deans and other administrators that, you know, there has to be a relevance to our degree. You know, we need, we, and, and you know, our mission, right? And we need to serve the community. And, and so I'm always impressed with Dr. Okada because uh, she's able to motivate people at GCC and you, you've got great faculty, great staff and administrators, but it's always responding to the community need. And so, um, you know, I know there's a lot I learned from her. Um, and when I was in California, I worked in a community college. So I've always loved the, the community college and the, the connection to people that might not be ready to go to a four-year university. That's so critical. Um, so I really, I, I just, you know, hats off to her. I always tell people I want to be Mary Okada <laughs> because she's just a great, a great role model in terms of bridging the academics with the reality of the, the workforce. And, and it, it's difficult, you know, coming from it's School of Health now, we changed our name, sorry, Nestor, but coming from a professional okay. discipline, right, such as nursing and, and when we look at public health, physical therapy, those types of, of, of academic programs, where our, our program is the, you know, our professional program. So we're not pure academics at all. We're entrenched in uh, and embedded within the, the workforce and the community because our students only learn well if they're working uh, alongside or learning alongside the actual professionals in their field. Um, and that's why our, our program is, is so good with the nurses because Guam has wonderful, very well experienced nurses. Um, so yes, yes, I echo Dr. Okada's sentiments and, and we are, are frequently re-looking at, you know, what should the priorities be? I think we're that's our obligation because we're a public institution. Yeah, I think that's going to be very important going forward because this pandemic, of course, is going to change a lot of things about, um, you know, uh, how, how the economy is going to work here. Um, so we've got a, f a few minutes left. Uh, so I want to get give each of you an opportunity to just to make a plug for the upcoming work conference uh, later this month. And uh, let me start with you, Denise. Why should we look forward to the work conference and invite folks to come, to join, to particip participate? Well, I think everyone should attend this work conference. Um, our work too, because we're gearing up for work three already, and uh, work three is going to be even more um, more activities uh, that will that will be another step further uh, to help people get back into the workplace. But um, work two is going to be on November nineteen and twenty. It will be via Zoom, and we will um, be sending out the link uh, to folks very soon. And um, this is going to be from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're going to be featuring six different panels based on the different industries that have been identified um, as critical areas for employment. We will be hearing from key leaders in the industries. So it gives people um, a great chance to hear from the folks that are making things happen. So if they are interested in any of those areas um, as either a career, as a business, um, to fill employees for training. This is the place where they're going to get all of that information. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. So um, if they want more information, they can always contact us at workforce at guamcc.edu. Um, and then they can also call me um, with any questions. Um, right here, We're all here at GCC. Uh, so um, I'm going to um, let uh, the other ladies uh, move uh, more information forward to you. And, um, and I'll stand by for that. All right, so Dr. Akana, make your plug for this conference. Sure. So I said it on work conference uh, one, and I uh, basically told the uh, listening public, um, this is your chance to identify what training opportunities are available. Um, there's, there needs to be discussion so that you can understand what you want to do and what you, know, what you want to explore. 
But the whole premise of this is so that we can encourage people to be at the front of the line for employment, not at the front of the line for unemployment. <laughs> and so if you start to, if you start to um, put, you know, develop your toolkit, and be flexible and be versatile so that if something happens that you can transition. And for some folks, this is gonna be a big transition, probably in an area that they never thought they would be interested in. But this is the time to just reskill, retrain, and be able to do multiple or different things so that you can be employable. And so we want people to come back to work. We want people to start contributing back to the economy but most importantly, we want people to be able to support their families and be sustainable. So the, you know, the end result of it is that we're gonna have a happier community when people are able to um, you know, take care of their families. And I know a lot of folks have that in mind. So we want to give them this opportunity and encourage them to reach out. And, and, um, and, if, and if this short-term boot camps don't work for you, maybe it's a, a longer program at the college or at the University of Guam in, in terms of a degree, but we just want to provide them with all these opportunities so that they can then make a decision as to, you know, what is it that they want to try. All right, and Margaret, you're going to get the final word. You want to make an appeal to, to uh, uh, healthcare industry aspirants? Yes, yeah, and I, I really want people that um, are displaced workers or, you know, those that have not entered the workforce yet but need a job you know, don't be afraid of a career in healthcare. You know, too many people think the only route is to get a four-year degree and become an RN or, you know, be, be an MD, you know, go off island and go to school and, and um, become an MD. But starting out with, uh, we have short courses like caregiver training at GCC and UOG. And those are super short, a couple of days. And you can be a caregiver. You can get a certificate. You can get your feet wet and find out, you know, do I want to do this? Um, and jobs are available. There's over a hundred jobs for caregivers available and you can work in different settings. Um, and so I, I really encourage people, don't be afraid of, of starting out somewhere, whether it's healthcare or not. But I, I really think that GCC, you know, it's brilliant to have something like this where people can decide, you know, maybe I do have an interest. Maybe you always wanted to be a nurse, but you just couldn't go to school and couldn't afford the four year time commitment, or sometimes it's longer than four years. But some of these other entry level jobs that are available uh, now, I think now is the time. So thank All you. All right, well, well said, thank you very much, ladies. Um, there you have it. Uh, we have Denise Mendiola, Dr. Mary Okada, and Dr. Margaret Hattori Uchima. Thank you for joining us for this uh, edition of In Full Zoom. I'm Nestor Lecanto. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you again next week. In Full Zoom is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc.